بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته Respected and beloved brothers and sisters Ramadan Mubarak All praise and thanks are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has given us an opportunity to greet and meet and witness the month of Ramadan this year Before we begin let us for a moment ponder over the grim fact that among our relatives and loved ones, friends and close friends, there were some who celebrated Ramadan with us last year, who are no longer with us this year. They have left this world and returned to their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَإِذَا جَاءَ أَجَلُهُمْ لَا يَسْتَأْخِرُونَ سَاعَةً وَلَا يَسْتَقْدِمُونَ and perhaps there may be some among us who may not live to witness another Ramadan. Because, brothers and sisters, death is unavoidable. Its time is decreed from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And indeed, time is passing and running out. So let us try our best to take the opportunity to make the most out of this Ramadan this year. For the year 1444 of the Hijrah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless each one of us, bless our families, and bless the Muslim Ummah in this month of Ramadan and beyond. Brothers and sisters, in His infinite wisdom, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made certain times, certain people, certain places, and certain objects more holy and blessed than others. Likewise, the month of Ramadan is the most precious of all the months in multiple ways. In terms of the Qur'an being revealed in this month, in terms of the fasting ordained in it by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, and in terms of the multiplication of rewards of good deeds, and in terms of getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Moreover, it is the only month that has been mentioned in the Quran al Karim by name. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, Shahru Ramadan al Ladi unzila fihi al Quran. Huda al Linasi wa bayinatim min al Huda wal Furqan. The month of Ramadan is the month when the Quran was sent down as guidance for all mankind. Brothers and sisters, what makes this month so special? It is a month of infinite blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a month of sabr or patience. It is a month of generosity and charity, sadaqat and zakah. But most importantly, it is the month in which the Qur'an was revealed and it is the month of siyam or fasting. This very special and unique ibadah, one of the pillars of Islam, Siyam literally means to restrain and to abstain from something. Why is it special? If you look at any other worship, especially the five pillars of Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ordering us to do something. With shahada, the testimony that there is no God but only one God and that Muhammad is his final messenger. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah. It's an order to do something, to say something. In prayers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said many times, وَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ So we have to stand and face the qibla after making the purification of uh, the place and the body and, you know, raise our hands and say Allahu Akbar and do the prayer. It's an act of doing something. Paying zakah is also an act of doing something. When we collect and calculate our, uh, our wealth and uh, see if we're eligible to pay zakah and see the 2.5 percent and also with Hajj and Umrah, it's also an act of doing something. But in fasting, the only pillar of Islam, you're ordered not to do something for a special time, to abstain from doing something. And subhanAllah, you're abstaining from doing halal things that you're used to do every day and every night. Something which you are accustomed to do and allowed to do otherwise. Fasting has been ordained upon every sane, mature, and adult Muslim who is able to fast. But the question again is, what is the objective of fasting? Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking all of us to fast during the days of Ramadan? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in the Quran al-Kareem, Surah Al-Baqarah, 
يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون All you who believe Fasting is prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those before you so that you may attain taqwa as in Surah Al-Baqarah. So basically the word taqwa among its other meanings, you know, piety, righteousness also means to save and to protect yourself from things that may harm you. And so you see in Al-Quran Al-Kareem the dua of the great people, the righteous people, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana. وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار Our Lord give us good in this world and in the hereafter and protect us from the punishment of the fire Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also um, uh, um, ordered us to, uh, to protect ourselves and to protect our families from the fire يا أيها الذين آمنوا سورة التحريم يا أيها الذين آمنوا قو أنفسكم وأهليكم نارا أو يهو بليف Save yourselves and your families from the fire. So as we can see, brothers and sisters, that taqwa have a direct relationship with siyam. Siyam provides us with an opportunity for every believer to draw closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to be protected from the hellfire. Subhanallah, when we fast, we gain the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from our sins. As in the hadith, مَنْ صَامَ رَمَضَانَ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ Whoever fasts the month of Ramadan with faith and hoping for its reward shall have all of his past sins forgiven from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But also as we can reflect on the meaning of the word taqwa as a shield or protection, the word siyam also is a shield or protection. In the hadith, Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم said, إنما الصيام جنة يستجن بها العبد من النار. Verily, fasting is only a shield by which the servant seeks protection from the hellfire. And in another narration, Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم said, الصيام جنة من النار كجنة أحدكم من القتال. Fasting is a shield from a hellfire, just like the shield of any of you in the battlefield. Fasting is a shield. This means that fasting guards us and protects us from sins and from the hellfire. Fasting and the Quran will intercede for us on the day of judgment. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said that the fast and the Quran shall come as intercessors on the day of judgment. الصيام والقرآن يشفعان للعبد يوم القيامة. سبحان الله. And so, brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in al-Hadith al-Qudsi has said that all of the actions of the son of Adam are for him, except for fasting. Fasting is for me, and I, I reward for it. And this is in Sahih Muslim. كل عمل ابن آدم له إلا الصوم فإنه لي وأنا أجزي به. But why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say that, that fasting to the, to, to, to the exclusion of other acts of worship is for him. Is not our prayers and a charity for his sake as well? Al Imam Al Ghazali rahimahullah, uh, writes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the action of fasting an extra degree of honor, extra degree of honor and sharaf by attributing it to himself. Binisbati al Siyam li Rabbi al Izzati subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because fasting is a hidden act of worship. Subhanallah, no one is actually able to see you fast. It's not an act, again, you know, it's an act to abstain. It's not an act to do. If you're praying, people can say you're praying. If you're saying the shahada, people can feel that you're saying the shahada. If you're paying zakah, some people will know that you're paying zakah. If you're doing hajj and umrah, a lot of people will know that you're doing hajj and umrah. But fasting, no one ever is actually able to see you fast. The only one who can see you fast is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This fact guards our intention against being corrupted, unlike prayer or a charity and hajj. That's why fasting is one of the ibadat that has a sign of sincerity or ikhlas with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
brothers and sisters, fasting is a great opportunity to get rid of the bad habits and their strong hold over us. It reminds us that these habits are not necessary or unavoidable. Subhanallah. They are either self-imposed or are imposed by the circumstances of our life and we can easily give them up by determination and resolution. Fasting in Ramadan develops in a person the real spirit of social belonging, of unity and brotherhood and sisterhood and, and, and of equality before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Observing the same duty in the same manner at the same time for the same motives and for the same end, subhanallah. Fasting teaches us to have sabr and patience. Fasting is to teach us to have gratitude and thankfulness. Fasting in Ramadan enables us to master the art of mature flexibility and time management. It cultivates in us the principle of sincere love. Because when we observe fasting, we do it out of our deep and sincere love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And a person who loves Allah, the Almighty God, truly is a person who knows what love is and why everyone on this earth should be loved and treated justly for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And subhanallah, brothers and sisters, from the very beginning of time, humans have struggled to master their physical and psychological selves, to have the balance, you know, between their bodies and their emotions. Because as we know, we have two sides of our bodies. You know, the, the, the physical one and the spiritual one. A fasting person empties his stomach of all the material things. You know, this, is, this is the time to, uh, to have the balance because we tend to focus so much with our materialistic side, but we do not pay attention to our spiritual side. But in Ramadan, it's an opportunity to do the balance. So a fasting person empties his or her stomach of all the materialistic things to fill his soul with peace and blessings, to fill his heart with love and sympathy, to fill his spirit with piety and faith, to fill his mind with wisdom and resolution. The person who can rule their desire and make them work as they like has attained true moral excellence. And fasting is a great way to do so. Fasting is a liberator. In Islam, the concept of freedom is very different from the uh, presented in today's life. So while the modern concept of freedom revolves around freedom of the self and individualism, Islam talks about freedom from the self. So by the Islamic definition, to be truly liberated is to be free from the chains of the nafs and freedom of the self is in reality chains put on the ability to be truly free. Fasting is prescribed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intended to liberate us, to make us free. That when I'm eating every day and drinking every day and focusing as many of us do on material things every day, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from his love and from his rahmah and compassion upon us, he prescribed the month of fasting, the month of Ramadan which disengages us from the addiction to food and drink and all the other things so that we realize that there is life beyond materialistic. There is life beyond eating. There is joy and pleasure. There is happiness, the source of which is not directly physical and material. Fasting, fasting in the month of Ramadan confirms our utter dependence upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by finding in him a source of sustenance beyond food and beyond this life. So in Ramadan, we should eat less and think more. We should drink less and reflect more. Fasting, like any other act of worship in Islam, has both an outward and inward realization. Will we be satisfied with fulfilling the outward as usual? Or will you and I will strive towards realizing the inward beauty of this unique ibadah in this unique month of Ramadan? We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Almighty to bless all of us, to accept from all of us, 
our acts of worship and ibadah in this Ramadan. ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم كل عام وأنتم بخير رمضان مبارك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Thank you.